Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Kaisa updated complete guide for patch 5.3a and onwards of course. Before we really get into it, don't forget to check out Kaisa's basic guide I'll put up in the cards above for her skills, leveling order, tips and tricks as well as some of her combos. But with that said, now let's hop into it. So as we know in this current um, patch, Terminus as well as Wits N did uh, cop a nerf. So there are a couple of um, other first item options that some people like to go. Items like Storm Razor, like Dust Blade uh, is coming back in. But personally, I still think that the best build you can go for Kai'Sa is the on-hit build. Uh, mostly because Wit's End is, is not really an item that's part of your core build. It's just an optional item. And the main core build item is actually going to be Terminus. Yes, losing 5 AD at the start does kind of suck. It's not too good. But... Overall, Terminus is just such a strong item. I mean, it gives you both AD and attack speed, on hit magic damage, stacking resistances, and stacking armor penetration. Like, the item value you can get from this one is just insane, so I still think that should be your first item. And to get your Q Evolve, then you go into your Gluttonous Greaves for the AD and the Omni Vamp. Remember, on Kai'Sa, it's kind of the only champion you want to go for boots second instead of first because you want to get your Q Evolve as quickly as you can. And then Bork is going to be your second core item, where it's going to give you the... Uh, physical vamp, the um, you know on hit current health damage, you know drain passive, and more of the stats you want, the AD and the attack speed, and then your third um, item is actually going to be Runan's Hurricane. Now you can swap this around with Riftmaker if you prefer to go for Riftmaker earlier and Runan's later, but I think Runan's is an insane item for Kaisen. I've always thought this was the case, like even back in the day. Uh, when Kaisa first came out, I always thought Runans was an amazing item on Kaisa simply due to the fact that she can apply her passive stacks onto three people at the same time and, um, you know, just proc them really quickly. Um, you know, just procking on three people at the same time is, is insane. The only reason why Runans has not been in Kaisa's build, um, you know, is because Kaisa. Uh, can't just one-shot one person and focus on killing one person instead of like three people and it's really uh, only amazing into um, tanks but it's still uh, great into non-tanks right so you get the attack speed you get a little bit of on hit a little bit of ad and of course being able to attack three people at the same time now Riftmaker comes in even though this is not an ap build but Riftmaker is still an amazing item on kaisa because you do get the omni vamp you do get the true damage and you know these come in handy in long drawn out fights which is where you shine as an adc with your dps uh, the stat line is pretty uh, pretty okay as well, you know, a little bit of health, a little bit of AP, a little bit of magic pen, and ability haste as well. You know, it's all going to be good. And in this case, even though you're not even building AP, the 7% magic pen from Riftmaker together with the 33% on Terminus is going to hit uh, 40%, which is the max magic pen you can get. And that's actually going to help you with your passive, because your passive does do uh, magic damage. And finding your last item is pretty optional, but here I actually have Wits and... Because uh, it still has, you know, a decent amount of on hit, still has the healing, still has the magic resist, it's always a decent item. Of course, some other options are, you know, um, just a pure AD stat stick item like Bloodthirster or, you know, more defensive options like Amaranth Twin Guard, you know, things along those lines. For the runes, of course, Lethal Tempo for the attack speed and the attack range. Brutal because you auto-attack quite a lot. Generally, Giant Slayer is going to be the superior rune here because generally there are always going to be, um, you know, people who build health on the enemy team. But of course, um, it is also possible to stick Coup de Gras against a full squishy team. And Alacrity here for more attack speed. Um, Bloodline is also possible. And Bone Plating for the defensive stats. And finally, for the spells, you want to go for Flash together with Exhaust. Exhaust, of course, amazing on Kai'Sa for all of those 1v1s. Uh, and all those duels. But with all that said, we can move on to taking a look at our gameplay. Okay, so now let's take a look at our gameplay. So before we really get into it though, don't forget to of course like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will of course be sure to address them. So one of the best parts about Kai'Sa is basically she works with any support. She's okay with enchanters, they can buff her up. And she's okay with engagers, she loves them as well because they can charge up her passive and help her to engage and allow her to ult in. So really kind of anything works. So actually, uh, in this game, um, I actually was picking uh, Kai'Sa because I was planning to build AP because my team had a Yasuo uh, mid and we didn't really have any AP. But um, Gwen was the, the last pick and she did uh, pick up the Gwen for the AP so I didn't actually need to build AP and I built on hit instead. Obviously, on hit is pretty decent in this uh, particular game uh, against Mundo. Helps to shred him down and against Galio as well, who even though he looks like he's probably building um, AP based on the fact he has Electrocute, uh, he is still a decently tanky champion just from base stats, so that is going to work out pretty well. So we're against a Caitlyn as well as a rather interesting um, Vega support. Now, of course, Vega support, I, um, I wouldn't say is 
completely um, troll because we have seen Vega support and Vega support can of course uh, work but it's definitely a little bit more of an unconventional um, pick compared to regular supports. <coughs> so here we get a relatively good, um, not I wouldn't say relatively good maybe, we get a decent trade off I, I guess you could say. Uh, with Kai'Sa really she's kind of not very strong in lane. The only way she really wins trades in lane is if she gets those isolated Qs which is basically what I'm looking for all of the time. I did get one on Vega just now. Um, and yeah, so that's really the main way you win trades, which is why Kai'Sa is not really the strongest laning ADC, because it, it's really, really difficult to get isolated Qs, right? The enemy team is generally going to stand near their minions all the time, and you're never really going to get it, except for these kind of scenarios here, where you can step away and, and uh, you know get something done. So here Mundo is coming in for the gank. Um, I'm obviously not the main target. Nami is really the one that's in trouble. She's gonna recall, so I'm gonna take the food instead because I want to stay uh, in the Mundo is now invading um, the jungle, and here I want to help, but I want to clear out these minions first. So I don't lose the gold and XP. Now I have the the ability to rotate over and help. Vegar is on his way as well. I'm starting to attack the Mundo from over the wall. Mundo does have level five already, so he does have. Ult. I'm only level three, but I'm able to actually catch up the Vegar for. Um, the first blood and I do end up um, dying after that to the Mundo. Mundo picks up a double. Yasuo is now coming in, dashing on top of the Mundo as well as the Caitlyn. Um, and then now Akali comes in as well. Yasuo is able to trade onto the Mundo before he dies himself. But eventually, overall, in the grand scheme of things, it's a 2 for 3 trade. Um, so it does not favor our team, although we did get first blood ourselves. So on... Um, the side of myself. Uh, I'm now 1-1. One and one. I did get the first blood goal and me and Caitlyn are at equal amounts of goal although I do have more minions to farm here than her so overall I do have a slight um, lead against her because the first blood plus uh, the fact that I got a kill and she got 3 assists means that I'm still slightly ahead of her. Overall it's kind of even um, in the lane in terms of me and Caitlyn although on the side of Nami and Vegar, Vegar is uh, building up a decent lead and of course Vegar um, could possibly build AP, he could build tank as well. Um, so depending on what he builds, you know, the goal on Vegar could be pretty useful because uh, Vegar is not a conventional support, he can build AP and he can carry in the late game as well. So now we're just clearing the wave because um, Caitlyn is not actually around, so what we want to do here is we want to um, shove in the wave, try to make them lose some minions and look for plates if possible, but it's not possible because Caitlyn is back in the lane and we can't really do very much. We're actually doing a pretty good job of not getting bullied by the Caitlyn, or rather you could say Caitlyn's doing a bad job of bullying us because the onus is on her to really come up and bully, but she has been trying to do that but just not very very successful. Like here she is walking up aggressively to poke, she's getting in some auto attacks but she's not generally very successful uh, when it comes to, to her poking. So here Nami's running out of mana, she has to take the fruit a little bit. Um, and yeah, so you know we do outscale Caitlyn eventually, so we just basically don't want to die to her in, in the early game, which is not too hard to do. Um, Nami bubble connects onto the Vegar. can't really do very much here, I don't want to ult in or anything like that. So here I have enough for Terminus, so I'm going to actually back and pick up Terminus. Of course Terminus is a huge um, power spike, uh, gets you the Q Evolve which is um, really the first major power spike you get in the game. I mean, Q Evolve plus first item is insane. However, here Vegar is able to roam to mid because we completely lost priority based on the fact that we are out of the lane uh, in the base. But we don't actually really lose very much minions here. We actually don't lose any minions. We were able to pick all of them up on the tower. Now here, I'm looking for opportunity. I hit the ult onto... Not ult. I hit the W onto Caitlyn and I ult forward. Unfortunately, the issue is that um, we don't have enough runway to actually finish off the kill on her. Now Vegar is the, the next target. He is coming in. Ve Mundo is coming in now as well. And now I'm realizing that this is a, a little bit of a spot of bother. So I'm going to actually flash away because Mundo, if he is out, could actually just tank tar and kill me. So actually honestly, whether I flash there or not, I would have died if Mundo had out. Thankfully he didn't, so he was not able to actually tank the tower. Okay, I'm trying to snipe Caitlyn to get the assist. And because um, I do think um, the Yasuo or Kane is going to get him, but... Unfortunately, I don't get the assist because the W doesn't actually hit Caitlyn. I think it hit Vegar if I'm not mistaken. But either way, my my um, mid jungle duo is able to clean up the bot lane kills, and we can go over to the dragon to take that. We can see Mundo is taking the hex gig over to trade for the um, gorilla turret instead. Akali goes in and actually steals the bear. Uh, no, still not the bear. Steals the dragon just with a Q, which is um, yeah. I'm not too sure what to say about that one. I mean, we have a Kane with Smite, and uh, 
he just lost it to an Akali Q, which is... I mean, it's insane for Akali to even go for that in the first place. I uh, hear Vagar gets isolated completely. I'm not sure what is this weird angle he's going on. I'm actually able to attack him from inside his cage and kill him. Now I get the uh, auto onto the Kate, uh, Caitlyn. I get the ult and the exhaust, and I'm able to actually pick up both of the kills. Now, very important um, micro outplay there. Uh, firstly, it's really the Vagar that misplayed by walking close to me, such that while I'm in the cage, I can actually still kill him without even getting stunned by the cage. And then obviously Caitlyn sees a low HP Kai'Sa and obviously she wants to get the kill. However, the combination of the fact that I have alt exhaust and a Nami to heal me and power me up is just too much. Like Caitlyn can't finish the kill. I'm able to up for the shield, exhaust her to reduce her damage, as well as uh, of course get the buffs from Nami and finish off the kill. Now here I'm just walking to tank a tower shot just to get that plate. 150 gold uh, for just a little bit of lost health that Nami can heal me for. Deal I take any day of the week. Now there I was trying to actually get a, a, I don't think I could kill uh, Caitlyn there, but I wanted to get a good chunk onto Caitlyn, which I was not quite able to do. Here I'm just going to pop the fruit to deny it, and then focus the tower a little bit to get maybe another plate. We do get the second plate, and Vagar is missing. So we don't really know where he went, um, if he's still in base buying or something, or he went to some other lane. Uh, and by the way guys, my... Pings are still broken. I can't ping missing um, the enemy vision one and the enemy missing one. So like I, I have no idea what's going on. We can see um, that Mundo is now coming to the lane um, and actually actually gets chased away by Yasuo. So here it looks like a little bit of a mini skirmish is breaking out in the river. I'm basically full stacking my lethal tempo onto the, the Mundo and now I'm going to focus Caitlyn instead all over the wall to kill Caitlyn. Now I'm running down the Vagar. And the Mundo as well, flash forward. I'm gonna finish off the kill onto the Mundo. Um, Akali comes in from behind, hits the, the, the uh, E onto me and is gonna follow. Huge bubble by Nami, I'm not sure if that was intentional, but hits Akali in mid-air and basically saves my life. Uh, if that was intentional, that was an insane uh, play by Nami, but if that was unintentional, then I just got really, really lucky. Either way, uh, Akali is not able to kill me and we're able to instant kill all of them. We pick up the mid lane turret as well, and you know, it's all good. Now here is going to be the start of where you see Yasuo and myself are always fighting for minions. So here I'm going back to the top wave to clear to clear my wave after we've already pushed mid. But you can clearly see Yasuo is basically just chasing behind me and also going for the same minion wave that I am. And he basically is stealing what I consider to be all of, all, all of my minions. So I'm obviously a little bit annoyed uh, with that, you know, understandably so. And uh, here Kane's trying some sort of wacky dive. We do have a pretty nice wave here, so I'm, I want to pick up this tower, which I do get. And he does pick up the kill onto the Vagar, which is, you know, is good enough. We don't really need to do anything on that. Pushes in the next wave, and now we can get off a reset. So here we can complete our Bork, uh, which is going to be particularly useful against Dr. Mundo. Uh, who has a Triforce, which is pretty interesting, and it looks like he's building either a Heart Steel or a War Mox as his second item. So here I'm going for this bot, uh, bot wave, um, but Yasuo starts picking a fight, so I'm gonna have to rotate to help him out a little bit. Gather is really low, I'm gonna ult in um, just to join the fight and finish the kill. I actually think if I didn't ult in there, uh, we actually lose the kill on Galio because Yasuo actually just left him there and decided to chase after Mundo instead. But, anyways, uh, another kill into our pockets. And, uh, you know, just picking up some waves as well, clearing out the enemy vision in our jungle. We don't want to leave it up. We definitely don't want the enemy team to see our movements. So really important to clear out their wards. Dragon is coming up in 20 seconds, and as we all know, the enemy team did steal the first one, so we definitely don't want to give them the second one if we can help it. Kane, a little bit over-aggressive, though, goes in onto the Vagar. Yasuo finishes um, him off with the catch and um, the Q, and there down he goes. Um, Galio is getting a, a CC and he's going down to the cane and next target is going to be Mundo. Mundo pops the ult, pops the gargoyles and is able to tank up a lot of damage with his ult and his general tanky build. Here yeah, I'm just trying to focus the tower a little bit um, and yeah not really too much is happening. Um, here I have a full stacked um, lethal tempo. Um, not anymore and now we're going to rotate over to the dragon. Akali thinking of stealing the dragon again. This time is not able to get into the pit to even attempt to steal the dragon, which is great. And now I'm going to hit over to bot. 
because bot has a wave that's accumulating it's gonna push into our side eventually as it's stacking up decently so i am on the way there i'm just gonna pick up this um skull prep why not and then i'm um, going to get grab this. now we can see the entire enemy team on vision in the top side so we know that no one is actually going to come down here to stop us so we're just going to um you know just push in the entire wave get all of the cs all of the gold and uh, while we're at it we're also going to pick up these crugs and get the red buff share now here my my camera is panning to the fight as i'm doing these crugs which is why i'm like basically attacking this Krug as it is resetting, but I'm basically just looking at the fight. I'm thinking whether I should actually go there or not. Um, then I realized that I can cut off the Mundo. So Mundo is likely either going to run into his jungle or run into mid. So here he's actually running into mid. So here I'm actually trying to cut him off. Uh, but the issue is that he's basically at full health, and I can't really kill him very easily. Um, I say that as I basically burst him down with the help of the Borg. And here you can see me and Yasuo are fighting over minions again. This time I actually get all of them, and he actually gets pissed off, and basically starts flaming me in the chat but that's basically what he did to me in top lane as well so i mean it's just the the, the two carries fighting for um cs you know what's new i mean i'm doing really well and yasuo is also doing really well so um everybody thinks they should be getting the minions right so next wave comes over i'm just gonna quickly grab it i block galio's escape and galio has in the stasis just um Timing the W with the stasis and we're able to get the kill on him. Now Galio is now 0 and 7 so he's definitely not worth like flashing for to kill at this point. Uh, but he is of course you know still a kill so money is money. Vagar is 0 and 8 as well so you know the enemy team is really not doing very well. We're kind of winning all across the board and really the only two main problems are kind of Akali and Mundo. Mundo is really tanky and really hard to kill and Akali is able to do a decent amount of damage. Here, speaking of which, I'm able to hit the W onto Akali, chasing her down, finally able to grab the kill on her. Um, Gwen easily is able to get rid of Mundo with her true damage. I mean, honestly, Mundo doesn't have a very easy time this match. He has a Kai'Sa who is building on hit and can shred him down. He also has a Gwen who has true damage and can also shred him down, so he's definitely not having the time of his life um, this match. Here, with all of those deaths on the enemy team, we can move over to Baron. Now, the thing to note is both junglers are dead including our jungler so this is a i wouldn't say it's risky but it's not a free baron because you know there always is a chance for galio or um for or caitlin to steal although they're obviously nowhere near the area so it does end up being relatively free now we are going to reset and we're actually going to pick up the the merc treads because as i said i think the main problem here is akali in terms of the damage and despite the fact that they're both feeding uh both galio and vega are also ap so you know just getting the merc treads is going to give us a decent amount of defensive stats against you know magic damage where there are three of them uh on the enemy team in fact even the storm razor proc is magic damage funnily enough so here we're just clearing out the minions, just a little bit of poke damage to Akali while we're at it because we have Runan's Hurricane. And here Kane is going in deep, um, Gallio just gets one shot, I go legendary. Now here I accidentally stab into the, the Vagar cage and I do end up dying. I was trying to actually ult right there but I couldn't even get my ult off before I died. I was thinking to ult and, and uh, kite away with my invisibility but I couldn't even get that off and unfortunately I do end up dying right as we get the Baron which is pretty horrible. Now I'm pretty sure Yasuo got caught by both the front and the back of the cage at the same time which I didn't even know was a thing but pretty sure that happened. Anyways here basically my whole team dies except for the T-Hex and, and the Kane. Now Kane is coming back in looking for that free kill onto the Vagar who's getting very very close. Down goes Vagar, um, Akali gets knocked up, Kane goes in with the Q, pops the stasis as does Akali. Galio ult comes in onto the, the Akali Shroud. Kane has to ult to get out of tower range. Tara goes down and Galio gets one shot again. And this time Kane is just going to retreat. And uh, I think he's going for the dragon. So while the TX is basically busy, uh, uh, the TX is actually down, but he was busy distracting the enemy team in mid, we are going to quickly try to sneak the dragon before the enemy team can re really respond. Mundo is now coming in. I actually thought Mundo was going to steal the dragon here but somehow Kane did secure the dragon and uh, we are able to basically just run down the Mundo as well. Now Kane is pretty fat. He is also going for like a black cleaver and a maw so he is going for a really bruiser um, kind of build and he is rid Kane so he does do a lot of damage against tanks as well so uh, another problem for Mundo to to solve. I mean Kane, 
Gwen, Kaisa, all really good at killing Mundo. So Mundo not having a fun time compared to what he could have been in another game. Here Ganu is trying to recall, gets caught by Gwen. Um, I don't know if he's getting caught by Gwen or Gwen's getting caught by him, but uh, they're getting into a fight. Now here, uh, we are stuck in the cage again. We actually popped the QSS like I don't know, a full second after that. So probably a waste there. I don't think we were really in trouble. But now with our team basically leading by a huge goal lead, um, any team can't really do very much. Here the Yasuo actually pops the Blast Plan to put me behind the Mundo, which could have been a very dangerous position if someone else had been there, but just look at the damage I'm doing to Mundo, and I'm uh, just kiting, kiting him out, just look at all the damage, just blasting him. And uh, Mundo uh, uh, does pop the ult, has to try to survive. Huge Nami wave, huge Yasuo ultimate, I get the double kill. And here I was thinking that, you know, I could be getting like a multi-kill here, but I run straight into the Vagar, uh, into the Vagar cage. Vagar um, stasis my, both my auto attack as well as I miss time my W so Vagar actually uh, survives which is pretty unfortunate and here I'm going to secure the inhib and uh, at this point we can't actually end the game because of the Nexus uh, shield actually the Nexus shield went up I, I think we actually maybe could have forced there maybe but either way we're going to go for the safe play which is actually to go for the Baron Elder is also coming up in half a minute's time so that's going to be the next objective so probably it's going to be Baron reset and then run to Elder uh, would be the most logical um, play uh, for my team to make here. Gwen is keeping Mundo busy. Mundo has no chance to come over here to contest it at all. Uh, we grab the Baron. We're gonna, as I said, we're gonna reset and we are going to uh, pick up the Wits end this game instead of picking up the the uh, Rift Maker because in this game, as I mentioned, there's a lot of AP on the enemy team. Like yes, again, Galio is zero and ten. Vega is two and eleven. Um, but we do have, we still do have the, the Akali who is, uh, you know, 4 and 3 and has 3 full items, so definitely a threat. Um, so in this game, we actually pick up the Wits End earlier just for that extra magic resist to ensure we don't die to any of the magic damage dealers or at least mitigate as much damage as we can. Like here, the TX is trying to do zoning duty uh, while I'm trying to DPS the Elder Dragon. Now I'm thinking Mundo might actually come in for a steal, but we get the, the, the two uh you know the two carries in the back line. So even though Mundo gets the steal here, it's not a very big deal because his two damage deals are dead. I was actually thinking Pensa is possible here, so I'm I'm coming in uh for the Pensa, but unfortunately um Kane picks up the other two kills before I can get there, so I end up getting a triple, he ends up getting a double, and we are now going to proceed over to um, end the game. So just running down uh, mid, Kane is going for the, the top tower, which is not very necessary. Uh, we're just going to wait for the minions to enter the Nexus range, and there is the dub. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbye.